Many people ask me questions about Stoic philosophy and practice. I've created this series to provide short answers to the most common, recurring, or confusing questions about Stoicism. How do the Stoics define happiness? This is an excellent question, which gets asked continually, whether in discussion forums or presentations or meetings on Stoicism. And as it so happens, it's a question that there is an answer for because the Stoics did, in fact, define happiness. Now, it's a little bit more complex than giving one single straightforward formula, which is what a person is often looking for, because the Stoics also gave a number of complementary characterizations, each of which is, is equivalent to a definition of what they conceived of as happiness. Before we start looking at some of the answers that the Stoics were in fact giving consistently throughout the development of their school about what happiness is, we need to be clear about the terms that are being used because in our modern context, many people associate happiness with a momentary emotion or mood that they're feeling, something fleeting, something that you enjoy just for a brief period of time. And that's not what the ancients actually meant when they used the terms that we nowadays translate as happiness. So in Greek, the term is eudaimonia, which doesn't translate exactly as happiness, but is, is close enough. Being of good spirit, it's a lasting sort of affective condition that one is in, but it's more than just a feeling. It has to do with fulfillment of one's entire life across the spectrum. In Latin, it's beatitudo, and this is important because we do see Seneca talking about that as well as Cicero. So we're going to be relying on this particular conception going forward. We're not thinking about happiness as just something uh, that we experience for a moment. It's something that we would aim for, as the Stoics call it, as an end, as a goal, as the purpose of human life. As I mentioned just earlier, the Stoics provided multiple characterizations of happiness. Each of these is understood to be a definition to tell us what happiness actually does consist in. Now, why did they give multiple definitions or characterizations? Well, because there are numerous different aspects, all of which are connected with each other, for what they are calling eudaimonia, beatitudo, and what we call happiness. So one of them that Zeno gives right at the start that I think a lot of people have gravitated to and which we see Epictetus himself later on bringing up is a smooth flow of life. Happiness consists in a smooth flowing and ongoing process of living. Several other characterizations or definitions of happiness are there right from the start for the Stoics, and they include living in accordance with nature and having and acting on and cultivating the virtues. So these are both just as important as this notion of flow, and you can understand these as, as correlative to each other by developing, by acting upon, by valuing the virtues, these, these, these great states of character or human excellence as that which really matters the most, that which has to be given the top priority, one will enjoy happiness. And it's not simply as a result of virtue. To be virtuous, to live virtuously, is to be happy. For the Stoics. The Stoics viewed themselves as differing from some of the other virtue ethicists of their own time in laying this almost exclusive emphasis upon the sufficiency of virtue to make us happy. 
by contrast to some of the other schools who said, well, you need some other goods as well in order to be truly happy. The Stoics said, no, by cultivating virtue, by living in that way, by behaving in that way, you will in fact enjoy the pinnacle of human happiness. Virtue and what is right in itself is the primary good. Now, one of the later Stoics, Seneca, actually wrote an entire treatise on the happy life. And if you look at part four of it, you see him talking about the ways in which we can define the happy life, which allows us to define happiness. And he tells us that it can be defined in, in multiple ways precisely because of not how complex, but how interconnected the parts or, or not even parts, aspects of happiness are. He says, our highest good may also be defined otherwise. That is to say, the same idea may be expressed in different language. And he gives a metaphor, just as the same army can be expanded and contracted, we can do the same thing with our conceptions, with our language. We can direct it towards virtue, towards flow, towards living in accordance with nature, towards fulfilling our duties, towards all these other things that fit into the notion of happiness. And he does give us a nice characterization there by saying we can define it in, in multiple ways. Here's one way that we can define happiness. We can say that man is happy who knows bad and good only in the form of good or bad minds, who worships or celebrates honor and is satisfied with virtue, who is neither puffed up by good fortune nor cast down by evil fortune, who knows no other good than that which he is able to bestow upon himself, whose real pleasure lies in despising pleasures. There, there's a lot involved in that. But this brings up another key aspect of the Stoic conception and indeed definition of happiness, which is self-sufficiency. The Stoic aims at living a life which is not going to be entangled with things outside of one's control, which then could impinge upon one's happiness. To be happy involves freedom, involves not being troubled by things, involves having the capacity to determine for oneself how to act, what to choose, what to follow. So all of these are very important aspects of the Stoic conception of happiness. This answers the question of how do the Stoics define happiness? It's worth repeating that the definitions that they give are plural, but they're all converging upon the same basic idea. I think it could be useful to bring this to a close to talk about some of the places where you can go to find out more about this. I mentioned Seneca's On the Happy Life, and that's a great source. You're also going to find many discussions of happiness within his letters. And you might also look at Epictetus and some of his discussions, particularly early on in the discourses about what makes us happy, what, what allows us to have uh, eudaimonia, that is happiness or freedom or not being bothered is, is one way of translating ataraxia. Another place to look would be Cicero's treatise, where it's actually a dialogue uh, on the ends, or sometimes it's translated on moral ends, de finibus, you want to look at book three, where the Stoic school, the Stoic conceptions of things are being presented in the character of Cato. Then a third place that could be particularly useful would be to go to Diogenes Laertes, Lives of the Philosophers. Look at the life of Zeno in book seven. You'll find some discussion of the doctrines of the Stoics. And then the final place that I would direct you to is Arius Didymus's Epitome of Stoic Ethics, where there is a very clear discussion about how the Stoics defined happiness from Zeno onward. If you found this answer helpful for you, then please share it with others who might benefit from it. This work is entirely supported by crowdfunding on my Patreon site. So if you find it valuable, consider becoming a supporter 
at patreon.com slash Sadler.